Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Breaking the Silence, Breaking the Cycle, and being at the Tin Leonard Foundation first annual domestic violence event. Let's give her a hand. At this time, I'd like you all to give a hand for Leslie Friend as she comes up and she takes over from this point. Thank you. give Tina and Kenny a round of applause for what it is that they're trying to do in my community. It takes a lot to have a vision and to carry out that vision. Let me give you a little bit of background on the Tina Leonard Foundation. The Tina Leonard Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that is dedicated to reaching back and paying forward in the community. The Tina Leonard Foundation will provide advanced education by combating teen pregnancy, lessen neighborhood attention by providing mentoring and obesity awareness, and to also motivate youth and women on the importance of self-development, self-esteem, family respect, effective work habits, community involvement, and service. Next, I'd like to ask for the founder, Tina Leonard to come forward with the welcome. I, would, I wanted to thank everyone in advance. Before we got to this program, I want to thank God first for waking me up this morning. I, I, I do, I, this is one of the events that I'm gonna hold because I was actually a victim of domestic violence at 15 years old, so one of the things I wanted to do is just to reach back into the community of high schools, middle schools, because sometimes people think it, it's not happening in high schools, and it actually is happening because it happened to me. So that's my goal, is to just reach back for what, what I did not have and help somebody else. So that's why I invited you all out here today. That's why I invited these great speakers out here because they have stories to tell that it is still happening and it, it can happen and if it does happen please tell somebody because that's the that's what I wanted to give back is just to break the cycle don't be embarrassed just tell somebody and that's what that's what my theme is breaking the cycle like we have to stop being embarrassed we have to Stop not telling people, break the cycle. See, and I just wanted to thank you all so much for just coming out and supporting me. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Next, I want to ask Kenneth Jackson to step forward and give us your words of wisdom. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, an honor for me to, uh, to be here to speak. I probably have uh, 100,000 different testimonies and stories to tell you about uh, why this is so significant for me. I learned later on, uh, uh, later on in my life that, uh, that I was a victim of domestic violence. Uh, for my parents, uh, my father was a was an abuser, was a wife abuser, and uh, I hope to end this story the way I started. And as a young man growing up, if I didn't know or understand anything, is that I knew that I didn't want to be like my father. I didn't want to be an abuser. Uh, I didn't want my children afraid of me. I didn't want my wife to be intimidated. As I grew older uh, uh, and, and, and started having relationships with women, uh, uh, I made a vow that regardless of what, that I would never put my hands on a woman. And, I, and I'm telling you the story from the beginning because domestic violence, the term domestic violence kind of grow 
with understanding. Uh, I learned later on in life as I grew that uh, it was far more reaching than that. And uh, 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 I learned that my mother was an abuser. Uh, she was an abuser according to therapists because she allowed it. Because she wasn't strong enough, wise enough, educated enough, knowingly enough to be able to stop what her husband and my father was doing. You must speak out. Because if you don't, the word victim goes further as far as services are concerned. You are just as much abuser as the perpetrator. Uh, because you allowed. When I was told that my mother was an abuser, uh, uh, because of what she allowed, I rejected it almost to the point that I wanted to fight. Not my mother, you're wrong. Right? But you are an abuser if you allow this. And you do have choices in what it is that you do. Right? You choose to become an abuser. Right? And it's not because your parents or your grandparents or anybody prior to you were like that. It's a choice. Right? Please speak out because you don't have to tolerate it and you don't have to be that. Um, that's my message. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, we're staying on point. I thank you very much for allowing me to speak and to share. Uh, uh, um, I'm Kenneth Jackson. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Christina Bowles from the Prince George's County Police Department share some words of wisdom with us as well. Would you give her a hand, please? I have some personal experience with that too, so that's why I was so, today wasn't supposed to be working, but I say I need to share this with everybody. Domestic violence is, um, very serious issue in the United States. Not just the United States, but every single country have domestic violence. It's something that is worldwide. But uh, in every every nine minutes, somebody's getting assaulted. Okay, every some every three seconds around the world. That's worldwide. It doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're rich or you're poor. Domestic violence is the lead of causes of injury in women more than car accident, muggling, and rape all combined. Every day in the United States, more than three women are murdered by their husband or by their boyfriend. Studies suggest that up to 10 million children witness a domestic violence. And you know, by the but the study showed that a person that is um, part of domestic violence is twice as likely to become somebody that will abuse somebody or will be, uh, will be subject to, to the abuse. So it's like, I'm used to this, you know, I'm gonna leave um, with this because I'm used to this. Um, my mother went through it, so it's okay for me to go through it too. So that's, what the, that's why we need to stop and uh, come forward, even though sometimes we think that our children is not looking, they are watching. They are watching, so you need to stop the cycle because your children will think it's okay for them to go through that experience too. Based on the report from uh, up to from uh, 10 countries, between 55 and 95 percent of women who have been physically abused by their partners and never contact nobody, like a government agency. We, I'm not just talking about um, police department. We have the domestic violence line. We have other agencies that's willing to work with everybody. 92% of women surveyed listed reducing domestic violence and sexual violence as their top concern, including verbal abuse, because sometimes people don't think somebody cursing you out is not abuse, it is abuse. That's uh, the beginning of domestic uh, violence right there, cursing you out, saying you're not good enough, you know, calling you uh, out your name. That's all uh, uh, verbal abuse. 
Of course, rape, stalking, assault, display of weapon, even though he didn't show you the weapon, he can only tell you, I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna do this. That's also domestic violence. And uh, if you're in domestic violence, for you to break out of that, you need to talk with somebody. Even if you don't wanna come to the police department, we have other ways of getting out of there. Where there's a will, there's a way. Before I go forward, because sometimes we don't understand some of the situations we get ourselves into. And by my good friend, Officer Bowles, sharing her story, I too once dated a Prince George's County police officer. And everything was wonderful until one day he said something to me that was so far out of character, it was ridiculous. And what I'm saying, I'm saying to you all is, if it walks like a duck <laughs> and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And you need to be aware of it. So as soon as he said something to me that was out of character, I stopped it. Because he had never said anything to me like that before. And he proceeded to tell me, oh, you have to get used to the way I talk. I said, no, I don't. And I say that to you, young people and old, don't tolerate it. Stop it when it starts. Because you know what it is that has been instilled in you, not by your mother and not by your father, but by Jesus Christ himself how much of a Jew you are. So you know what it is that you're supposed to tolerate and what it is that you're not. So if somebody comes out they face wrong to you, stop it. So when the verbal abuse starts and you stop it, then it won't grow into domestic violence because you have stumped that thing before it began. Next I will ask that um, Vicki Carter come and share her stories. Vicki Carter, go. Okay, would you give her a round of applause as she comes here? Um, when my abuse first started, I was in my early 20s. Um, and when you go through abuse, you have to understand that it not only affects you, it affects your children as well. Um, my abuser not only physically abused me, he sexually abused me, he emotionally abused me, and he basically almost just killed my soul. There were two children formed out of that abuse. Uh, the last one died um, based on going through the domestic violence. If I decided I wanted to go be with my family, when I got back I got beat because I used my family as an excuse to go see whatever guy that I was trying to sneak off to see. Um, it had gotten to the point where um, it affected my children, even though they didn't publicly speak out. But my, my oldest, she's now 26. Um, she hibernated in the house, um, wouldn't eat, wouldn't do anything. Um, my son, at the age of two, I had to call his father to have him come get him. Because it had gotten to the point where I was unable to not only care for me, but I wasn't able to care for him. This man has stripped everything from me. Still going to work, you know, my mind's starting to drink, starting to smoke, um, trying to relieve myself. Um, I lost friends, I lost family, because I kept going back, I kept going back. Each time I would get out, oh, for a while he'd be gone. Oh, it's good for a month, but then it picks up the cycle again. So if you are ever in a relationship with a guy, and at this day, you need to do a screening process. That's for men and women to know who you're dealing with because you will find sometimes they are sexually abusers, they are um, molesters, um, all those type of things. So what appears to look good on the outside, do further investigation before getting into a relationship. And for the children, when you see your parents going through domestic violence, tell somebody at school if your mother or your father won't do it, because that's what's gonna save you. 
because it can affect your grades, it can affect your behavior with your friends, it can cause you to start losing friends because you're lashing out them and they don't understand what's going on in your home. Do not help your parents keep you trapped. It takes more than just you to get out. But once you get out, work on staying out. It's almost like AA. If you ever feel like, oh, I, I wanna go back to this person, call one of your supports. So I just encourage all of you to stick together. Don't allow nobody to trip, strip you of your soul. It's all about you. Let God lead your path. Don't try to do it alone. Because every time you try to do it alone, each time gets worse. And if there's anybody in here who's going through it, you may feel embarrassed because you're of high stature. It doesn't matter. You talk to somebody. Don't be afraid to speak out because the life you save will be your very own. to her and, and to Tina Leonard, so I definitely want to squeeze it into my schedule um, to, to be here in support of what the Tina Leonard Foundation is doing in Prince George's County and really throughout the state of Maryland. Domestic violence, we are in Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and domestic violence goes a lot into, um, you know, the public safety of our community, of our women and men, and really of our children. And we know that domestic violence um, in our community transcends from generation to generation. What the Tina Leonard Foundation is doing over here with you all today and bringing everyone together, it brings awareness to the community and to the county and for us to continue to educate each other, for us to continue to support each other, for us to continue to receiving information like the young lady that just spoke to you all about the signs of domestic violence and how you can help. You can't not, I can't sit up here and tell you I can stop everything. 
gonna be violence in our community because that would be, you know, fibbing to you and telling stories as we tell the children. But what I can do is to tell you that I will continue to support organizations and programs and services throughout the county that put an end to domestic violence. And so I commend all of you all for coming out here and spending your Saturday, right? That's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. But the fact that all of you are here today supporting Tina Leonard and domestic and putting an end and breaking the cycle to domestic violence, that means you are playing your part. And so I thank you so much for your dedication and for your support. And let's continue to educate and bring awareness to this to this horrible. I'm gonna say disease and issue in our community. So you all continue to have a, a great day and God bless you all and thank you for indulging me. Okay, we're gonna continue on with our program with Stubbs, um, Leave of Faith, as she takes the stage. Would you give her a round of applause, please? Good day, good day, good day. How y'all doing today? Yeah. Are y'all blessed? Yeah. That's right, we are all blessed. It took a lot for me to get here today. Um, and what I'm gonna be discussing today, I'm not gonna keep you guys long, it's gonna be mental abuse. And, and there's some, uh, some other things that go along with mental abuse. So we're talking about mental and emotional abuse, which is abuse where one person says something that makes the other person feel bad for not doing a certain thing in the end, making one feel like it is their fault. It, you know, it just cycles down and mess up your head in the long run. So that goes into mental manipulation, making you feel bad when you don't agree with them. But um, a lot of males, I hear them say, well, if you don't do this for me, if you don't have sex with me, if you don't, you know, do other sexual things with me, then I'm not gonna be with you anymore. So mental manipulation is, is, is really um, an abuse that you don't wanna get into as well because you have to go home every night. You could be out having a good time with your friends, and they come that time to go home, and all types of things start running through your head. So I just want to say, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your mind is telling you, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. If you wake up tomorrow, whatever hell you went through today, you can make it through because you got another day. So push on, build your faith, and don't let it go. LeapofFaithShow.com, I'm your girl Stubbs. Thank you, Tina, for inviting me. Y'all have a great weekend. We have one more to come before us and share a story. That's McNam Brown Anderson of the Lakeisha Brown Foundation. If you would give her an applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am here today to talk about, to bring awareness to a cycle of violence that is plaguing our community. Through awareness campaigns like the Tina, Leonard Foundation is doing here today, and other people stepping out to tell their story of the horrible things they go through with breast cancer. Nay has made it okay for people to talk about it, so people are talking about it more freely. You can't go nowhere without seeing a pink ribbon. You can't turn on your TV without knowing about what's going on with breast cancer. No one wants to talk about domestic and sexual violence the way that they are willing to talk about breast cancer. And I ask myself, why? And I say, because it's ugly, it's painful, it's shameful, and people are just afraid to talk about it. Domestic violence um, victims are called stupid. We hear lazy, we hear slutty, and then the most one, they deserve that, because they should have left. It's important for them to know about that when you have children in your home, the effects that they go through when they witness domestic violence. That was my daughter's case. When I grew up, I grew up around a lot of violence. I never seen adults handle situations correctly. Everybody that I knew, the first thing that they would do if something didn't go right, they didn't know how to discuss it, they took it to it with their hands. 
So that's how they reacted to everything. So when then I got into a marriage, all my girlfriends was fighting all their boyfriends and husbands. Everybody was doing it. So you think this is what you do? Well, while I'm doing what I do, my children are watching and they are hurting. And so, and then eventually, what they do, what they normally want to do, is get away. So my daughter, she went through different things. She wouldn't stay with her dad. She couldn't stay in the house with me and my husband. So she ran to my mom's house. She ran to my sister's house. But nobody said nothing. Everybody knew that I was being abused. They knew the children was running, but it was my fault. But no one stepped in to say, well, what's the real thing? That's going? Let's deal with the real issue, because we all didn't dealt with it. But nobody wanted to talk about it. My daughter at the age of 14, she met this young guy who she thought she was in love with. She was doing the typical teenage thing. She was telling me she was staying with her girlfriends, but lo and behold, she was with him. This little boy has a mother too. She allowed it. My daughter was 14 years old. So this went on, I'm back and forth with the police and everything. She started appearing, she started showing up with bruises on her arms and things like that. Her father, my ex-husband, and her brother, we all tried to step in and intervene the situation. But the typical thing that a young woman is gonna do is say, no, he didn't do that. If this person, if the person doesn't want the help, you have to back off. So that's what we did, at least we thought that's what we should have done. We never knew about the abuse, what he was doing to her. And then on March the 17th, I get a phone call and tell me that my daughter was shot in the head. Mm -hmm. So when I hear it, I drop the phone. And because God has been so good in my life, the first thing I did was pray. But I stay here and tell you today that I don't know what happened to my daughter in her room. The only thing that I do know is that she's dead. So the main thing that I want to say to the parents is that your children are hurting too. And if you don't get help for your children, and change your situation, the same thing that you fear will come upon you. I thought that with me going through it and she see how bad it's for me, that she wouldn't want that for herself. The effects of witnessing domestic violence on children in the home, it hurts them too. Even if your children are not being abused, observing violence in your home leaves lasting effects on their development. So what I want to say today is that if there is anyone that is in an abusive relationship or anyone you know that's in an abusive relationship, always remember, number one, you are not alone. It is organizations like the Tina Lennon Foundation, the Keisha Brown Foundation, the House of Brew, everyone, they are there for you. The police department, they even have a domestic violence unit. Call someone, there's someone there to help you. And number two, it is not your fault. I must repeat that again, it is not your fault. You did not cause any of these things to happen to you. You are not the bad person, you are not none of those things that anybody told you. Third, and help is available. So as I close out my presentation to you, I want you guys just to remember that instead of raising our fists, let's raise awareness. Thank you.
hours because my sleeves are a little bit long. But again, this is a marvelous event. If you missed it, look on her website, the Tina Linnet Foundation. She's helping the community, and it's just an awesome event. Thank you, Tina. We love you. She's going to make a change in the community. Thank you. Amen. Hi, I'm Melinda Francis with Tracy and Cancer Girl. I'm here with my business partner, Reva Duncan. Hello. We are attending the first annual Women's Balance uh, facility, and we are having a fabulous time. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks um, to uh, Tina Leonard for allowing us to come here, you know, show support for, you know, breaking the cycle, um, breaking the silence. Hi, I'm Anthony Free, and this is Jamika Black here of J2 Inc. Shoes and Clothes. Um, we're just here supporting this Tina Leonard and the Tina Leonard Foundation. This is a wonderful event, great turnout. She's doing marvelous things for the community, and we will definitely support everything that she does. All she has to do is give us a call. Good to me. 